Hey, what's up, bar listeners? Before we get into this episode, want to let you know that today's show is brought to you by AGTV. That's right. The people that made the American Gospel documentary has come up with a streaming service app that's pretty much like Netflix for solid biblical content. Go to watch AGTV. Use the code BAR, the number one, to get 10% off the monthly rate. AGTV is so awesome. They also have our very own Just Think podcast on there so you want to make sure you go to watch agtv.com use the code bar the number one for 10 percent off yo welcome to the bar come on and pull up a seat and open up your Bible, what a wonderful feast The living bread and we're discussing what it means for the streets The inner cities and the burbs and every person we meet This where we tell us world views that we hear from world news In light of the scripture, we are here to serve you We're your source for resources To help you on your way as you battle mean forces This is for the people who can see the importance Of sound theology and the scripture that support it And this is for the truth lovers Biblically reforming, preaching Christ to the nations Yeah, welcome to the modern the reformation yeah the bar biblical and reformed welcome everybody to the bar it's your boy Dwayne in the building right back in here another tuesday super excited as always to be coming through your speakers through your earbuds wherever you listen to the bar we're grateful that you're listening and i love to start every show out by thanking the listeners man you guys are awesome you guys are amazing and i appreciate you listening to the bar and letting people know about the bar I also want to let you know about things that we got coming up, man. We have uh, exclusive content that you can now subscribe for in the, uh, um, I guess, the the show notes. Um, and this is just kind of extension of current um, uh, interviews and, and just a little extra content for you. Um, if you feel free to support the podcast, you could definitely click that link and uh, and subscribe to the exclusive content. And like I do every week, I bring you an awesome guest. This awesome guest uh, is a man of great patience. Um, we were actually scheduled to uh, record a while back, and uh, my job at the time had me uh, traveling, and I did not anticipate that travel. But nevertheless, he was uh, so gracious to uh, adjust his calendar and co- still come on the show. I have, on, I have on today my brother, none other than Brother Allen. How you doing, sir? I'm doing fantastic. It's an honor to be here. Yeah, that yeah, I'm gonna have to send that check in the mail, man. <laughs> Before we started, uh, I was checking the mics, and and Alan kept saying it was an honor to be here. So you got to say that on the show. So uh, I'm gonna definitely have to do that for you, brother. But listen, Alan, man. All jokes aside, man, just kind of tell the people a little bit about you. Um, though many people might not know the man behind the machine, man. Tell them what you do, and and also why I reached out uh, with the YouTube and everything. Yeah, for sure. So I'm actually a Christian YouTuber. I have a channel on YouTube. It's called Polite Leader, and it's primarily a discernment ministry. Um, the majority of the time, I analyze and examine the theology and teachings of movements like the Word of Faith movement and the New Apostolic Reformation. I examine their teachings in light of what the Scripture teaches and inform my listeners and my viewers about some of the faults, the weaknesses, the falsehoods, the errors in a lot of those teachings, and to always use uh, appropriate biblical exegesis when examining the scriptures and not simply proof texting and doing what a lot of word of faithers and a lot of new, uh, oh, excuse me, NAR advocates do, and that is abuse the scriptures and use eisegesis rather than exegesis. Myself, personally, I don't really have an, an amazing or... <laughs> Uh, memorable <laughs> conversion story or anything like that. I'm actually a seventh generation Christian. Nice. My grandfather was a was an elder at the Presbyterian Church in India. I came to the United States when I was two years old. During my formative years, we primarily in- attended Southern Baptist churches and Grace Community Church, where John MacArthur is a pastor teacher. Mm-hmm. I became interested in Reformed theology and Calvinism when I was in high school. When I started reading Charles Haddon Spurgeon and John Calvin and B.B. Warfield, and I I became interested in that at a pretty young age. I didn't have necessarily a very consistent walk with the Lord during my high school years and college years and even uh, my adult, my my later adult years. I just um, started to be a little bit more consistent over the last several years, and I noticed that uh, there 
th- there was a way that I could share what I had learned in books instead of just keeping it to myself. There was a way I could share what I'd learned mm-hmm. on social media. So I decided to do so on a YouTube channel and the Lord ended up blessing it. So that's where I'm at. Nice. Nice. Now that, that is awesome, man. Um, you know, it's funny. Some people have those, I always call it, uh, you know, uh, uh, almost smoking crack conversion stories or those, like you said, that, that, you know, uh, is really nothing dramatic, uh, but kind of a, a life of, you know, being growing up in a, a home like that. That's amazing. And, um, and, and that's the reason why you caught my attention, man, was the YouTube videos because, you know, uh, as you probably know, you probably did your research. I came out of the charismatic movement and the, uh, the new apostolic, uh, uh, reformation movement or whatever. Um, and so, you know, hearing you break down these different, uh, videos and things like that, man, it got me excited, you know, cause, um, I know those kind of tools help, you know? Um, so you, you talked about, you, you dropped some names when you talked about what you started reading and become reformed. Um, were there any influencers mm-hmm. or, or people that, uh, that, that kind of got you inspired to do the YouTube thing and, and, and approach it that way? Cause I know a few that do similar. I'm sure you do too. Uh, or, or any of those guys, uh, influential in, in you come coming in and doing it as well. Well, yeah, right now, right now, the primary reformed influences in my thinking are Dr. James White. Mm-hmm. Um, he has a ministry called Alpha and Omega Ministries. Also, uh, Jeff Durbin, mm-hmm. who has a ministry through Apologia Church, Apologia Studios. Um, and R.C. Sproul was very influential as well. Am I thinking? But when I started my YouTube channel, I did not know that it was going to be a discernment ministry mm-hmm. channel. Gotcha. Uh, originally, when I started the channel, it was actually an occult expose channel oh. because I had noticed that there had been a lot of videos that were exposing the occult uh, mm-hmm. by Christians, but I didn't see a reformed voice in there. So I thought, hey, let me let me throw my hat in there. Let me let me try to be the one right. a reformed voice or Calvinistic voice out there that's exposing entertainment. And I sort of had it was sort of a mixture of Stan Monty and Fritz Springmeier, mm-hmm. as well as John Frame, that I wanted to <laughs> kind of model my channel after originally. But then um, somebody, a subscriber or a regular wa- watcher, asked me to do a video on Hillsong. Mm. And that video ended up blowing up. And then I did one on Joel Olstein, and that one also ended up getting a lot of views. So it seemed that that would be a better direction to take the channel in, since people were more interested in in that subject matter than they were in the exposing entertainment. So that was really the initial, I mean, it wasn't planned by any means to be a Christian discernment ministry. It just ended up turning out to be that way. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. Um, because, you know, prior to, I'll say about, and there's probably still people doing it, but um, late or early 2000s, um, it was the hot thing on the internet because I was involved in it as well as far as uh, exposing uh, you know, entertainment. Um, even uh, we we call it the page that started it all. I started a page on Facebook called "Be Not Deceived," and uh, we literally, you know, it was discernment. You know, a cult. Uh, you know, the devils in the music. All like we went hard on that. You know, and and you know, kind of the same as our theology uh, changed and grew. Uh, the focus went from those guys to false teachers because we felt like they were doing more harm. Then, you know, you know, someone that's a sinner that's, you know, out there doing occult things, I, I would expect that from them, you know, but someone that claims to be a Christian, but uh, is teaching doctrine that uh, can cause people to stumble or fall or whatever, you know, that we, we saw that as a bigger threat. So I definitely get understand your thought pattern on that, man. So what I like is uh, kind of your approach. You know, and I, I'm and I'm sure it has a little bit to do with your personality, but it's just to me, man, it's just a smooth, cool approach to your discernment. Like you, 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 your, your, your tone, your voice, just the way the videos are set up. Is that, is that, is that just you? That, that's your, that's just your flavor. Well, first of all, thank you for that. I really <laughs> appreciate the, the compliment. Um, I've talked about this on other podcasts. As I said, I've struggled with anger issues mm. most of my life and allowed my anger to get the better of me. And it's, it's really worse than a drug or even worse than alcohol in a lot of ways. It ends up um, costing you relationships. It ends up costing you a lot of things, you mm-hmm. know, hard feelings of people, you know, it, it's, it, it was just a bad thing. So I thought, 
well, when I, when I do this channel, I'm going to pick a name that's going to force me <laughs> to control my anger and keep that in check. And I'm just going to use a calm and measured tone because there are a lot of YouTubers out there who are yelling and screaming. Not, oh, yeah. not all of them, obviously. A lot. But there are some who are, yeah, <laughs> you know, I get a little too many. But um, I was like, oh, yeah, let me, just, let me just implement a different style. If it's not successful, that's fine. But that's the way I'm going to do it because of all the damage that anger and, and you know, impatience and other things have cost me in my life. And so that's really the way uh, it came about, that whole, you know, polite leader and all that stuff, the, the, the calm measure tone, the relaxed atmosphere and, and all of that. It's, it's as a result of things in my past that I did not want to resurface. Wow. Wow. Yeah. No, that you definitely you're, you're achieving that. Um, and, and I would never think that you had anger issues. <laughs> <laughs> that's just you just never know what's going on behind the scenes man um you know exactly. and, and 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 the whole uh you know you know even the name polite leader uh that 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 whole idea is uh is intriguing to me man so so you talked about the um the one that blew up the hill song and then the Joe Osteen tell my listeners those that might have missed it um what were some of the things you brought out about hill song and 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 then i mean everybody know about joe but what what was the two things that that you kind of uh hit on for for both of those and then um we'll, we'll we'll get into some other uh other of your episodes sure um i think one of the because you i think you mentioned on another podcast i've been trying to listen to as many as i could that you came out of the new apostolic reformation and, and i i try to be um as careful as i can in my language and i try to make appropriate and proper distinctions so I would more or less classify Hillsong as part of music culture and seeker-sensitive culture. And I would place Joel Olstein under the category of maybe word of faith light. He's not mm -hmm. really into all the healing. He's more into the power of, of positive thinking and, and right. positive confession and things like that. So I, when, I, when I make a video, I try to look at each individual movement or each individual person based upon their teachings and their teachings alone, not try to lump. Uh, you're going to have to obviously bring in other elements because there, it is a movement. There's mm -hmm. no question about that. But when I, when I focused on Hillsong, it was primarily the lyrics of some of their songs. And a lot of Hillsong songs are the type of songs that uh, Justin Peters and others have labeled as Jesus is my boyfriend type of music, <laughs> which is not only unbiblical, but very, very inappropriate. Mm -hmm. uh, Hillsong also has a lot of secret sensitive elements to their teaching. Right. I don't think that their, their teaching from the pulpit focuses on Christ, focuses on God's nature, God's holiness, God's law, the nature of the gospel, the, the doctrines of grace, any of those things. You could probably listen to a whole bunch of sermons by Carl Lentz and Brian Houston and never come across any of those elements. Right. In terms of Joel Olstein, um, I'll just piggyback on one of your, your other guests, Michael Horton. He, he's written an entire section in his book, in his books, Christless Christianity and Gospel Driven Life on, on stuff like, like Joel Olstein has taught. Um, I think that Joel Olstein is an example of Christless Christianity, mm. where if you look at the statement of faith of Lakewood, it, you, you're, you walk through it and you're like, hey, you know, this is, this is pretty solid. I think that's one of the difficulties maybe for people to be pulled out of NAR and pulled out of the Word of Faith movement, pulled out of maybe a teacher like Joel Olstein, is because they're looking at that stuff and they're like, well, I believe all that stuff too. And it's sort of like, yeah, but it's really file cabinet theology. It's almost like it's assumed, but it's never taught from the pulpit. It's never taught mm -hmm. from the lectures and the Sunday schools and things like that. So it ends up becoming a Christless Christianity. And then in other elements, it also ends up contradicting scripture. Like there's nothing in the Bible about positive confession and word of understanding and things like that. And so that's, you know, sort of the way I approach it and look at it, I try to give people the benefit of the doubt. If somebody has a conservative or orthodox statement of faith, I assume that they mean it. But then when they start teaching things which either contradict scripture or which sort of just leave the essentials of the gospel assumed, I try to point those things out. Gotcha. Yeah, no, that that's great, man. That's a great approach. Um because you 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 know you can Sometimes discernment pages or people or channels uh, make it worse with their approach, you know, uh, with, 
you know, like you say, you, you be you 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 conscious of you know how you word things and things like that, and not grouping because that that's how they slip out of you know some of the <laughs> false teachers as I slip out of it, you know, they were like, oh, they're saying I'm this or that, you know, so that 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 is that is really cool uh, that you take that approach. Um, so as, as far as uh, uh, some of your more recent episodes, what uh, uh, let's see, there it is. So I see that you did an expose on the Cuties uh, movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't watched that one yet. I think I'm yeah, probably about two or three behind. Oh, you're one of the blessed ones. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. That was pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't, um, uh, but I've heard the buzz. Um, and, and, and just wondering, you know, just for my listeners, you know, those that might be one of the best ones as well, what, what are some of the warnings that you talk about in that video? And so that they may even, uh, check that out. Yeah. I mean, that one's a real jaw dropper. I mean, that, that's one that you would think that, and I, and I think if, if I'm going to be honest and fair, it's not just Christians and conservatives that have been critical, but I think there probably are even a lot of social liberals were probably critical of that film because they have um, some of them have children as well. I mean, mm-hmm. that, that's like really a film that's pretty much indefensible. Essentially the argument, uh, if you don't know, if you haven't watched it, or if you haven't heard about it, there's a, it's a film that's been released or uploaded on Netflix. It's called cutie. It's a film that centers around a young 11 year old girl who's from a conservative, I guess, fundamentalist is the way to describe it. Islamic family because uh, they practice polygamy in this particular family. Mm. And she ends up becoming, she's in France, so it's actually a French film. It's not an American film or anything. Oh, film. okay. She's in France, yeah. And she ends up becoming enamored by social media and uh, you know Instagram culture and all of that stuff. And she ends up meeting a group of very, I would describe as sexually precocious 11-year-old girls. They're talking about things that 11-year-old girls should not be talking about. Really, nobody should be talking about it, but especially 11-year-old girls. Right. And the film shows these young girls as she becomes more and more interested in this culture because they're, in, they're interested in dancing. But the dancing that they do isn't like ballet or, or stuff that, you know, you know that's, that would be, you know, normal dancing. It's, it's very sexually uh, suggestive. It's very, very inappropriate. Even for adults, it would be inappropriate. Right. But when 11-year-old girls are doing it, it's magnified because it's basically ch- child sex exploitation. Mm. And Netflix has said, well, this is a movie that's making people aware of child sex exploitation. But you don't make people aware of the exploitation of children by exploiting them on film. And that sh- sort of shows you the absolute moral bankruptcy in Hollywood and among the entertainment elite, that's how far gone that they are, that they would actually argue in defense of this film when even a lot of people on the left, a lot of liberals have been critical critical of it. So in my video, I essentially just repeated what I just kind of summarized just now. And that has pointed out how this is really an example of the absolute moral decline of our society and where we are right now in 2020. There would have been, I, I would imagine almost universal condemnation of this in 1970 or 1980, it would not have been oh, accepted. No way. Yet, it's, yeah, it's being published on a very, very popular social media outlet um, such as Netflix. So, I mean, this is just really jaw dropping. Yeah, almost no. speechless about it. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like it, and that's I've kind of you know picked it up from what you see posted, and um, and yeah, that, that's sad, and it, it just says a lot about the time, man. Just honestly, um, where where we are total depravity, things like that. Um, so very, very, very unfortunate. But uh, glad, you know, uh, people like you are, are covering it, putting it out there, exposing it um, for the church. And I mean, for everybody, especially in that case, for sure. So right here, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right Good afternoon. Would you like to try a free sample of our double fudge brownie? Oh, sure. Mmm, that's very good. I- I'll just take one more just to be sure. Yep, still very good. Some things never change, like never being able to take just one free sample. And Geico saving folks lots of money on their car insurance. Mmm, is that macadamia nut I taste? Let me take one more. Sir, mm. yeah, I thought so. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Back. 
Hey, what's going on? This is your boy, Pastor Chris Hernandez. And this is Jimmy De Los Santos. And we're your boys from SolarCast. We're just a couple of average guys who came out of the charismatic movement to a reformed understanding of theology. That's right. Catch us with a new episode every Tuesday morning on all the platform networks, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Our Heart Radio, and the like. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at Sola underscore cast. Also search for us on Facebook, like the page, share the page. Let's get to the meat. Let's do it. All right, we're back in here with the polite leader, aka Mr. Allen. How you doing? Good, good. I, I, I'm, I'm being a good host. I hope you know. You, you say you listen to the show, so that makes sure my the expectations are where they are. You know, I don't want to diminish. Like, man, this was no fun or whatever. But uh, ho- hopefully, I'm holding you down pretty good. And if you've listened to the show, you know what's coming. It's the three signature bar questions. These are three questions that I ask all of my guests. And the first signature bar question is. What kind of music do you listen to? You know, I like classic rock. One of my favorite bands is Led Zeppelin. No. So I listen to a lot of their music. Some of their songs I have memorized. It's probably not a good thing knowing some of the occult influences on somebody like Jimmy Page. Right. But I also enjoy Southern rock as well. You know, bands like Leonard Skinner. Uh, when I was younger, I was really into all different types of music, pop music, hip hop, uh, even 90s country. So I have a very diversified taste in music. Okay, that, that's fair. You know, it's funny. We was talking about discernment and the cult, and you say Led Zeppelin. I'm like, oh, <laughs> 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 oh, okay. Yeah, All right. exactly. <laughs> I get it. No worries, man. No judgment here. This is the Bar Podcast, man. You can say whatever you want when it comes to your music genre. No judgment whatsoever, unless it's heel song. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, exactly. Let's just talk to me. Yes, sir. All right. So next signature bar question is, what book or books are you currently reading? Well, I'm reading um, for, for myself, you know, privately. I'm reading Jesus and the Eyewitnesses by Richard Back. I'm trying to go through that. I started it earlier, and I'd like to resume reading that. I think it's a really good uh, apologetical work like, that's very helpful. There's a couple of classes, oh, sorry, not a couple of classes. There's a couple of books that I have to read for my current seminary class. I'm also reading those. But um, and there's another book called The Enduring Authority of the Christian Scriptures, which uh, D. A. Carson is the editor of, but it has multiple authors. So I'm trying to work through that one as well. Nice. All right. Last signature bar question is: What podcasts or sermons do you listen to? Yeah, I regularly listen, like almost religiously, to the Dividing Line, where mm-hmm. James White's the host. I try to listen to Apologia once in a while. Uh, one podcast which I've only recently started listening to, which I love a lot, is the one by um, Michael Foster and Non Tenant. It's on the It's Good to Be a Man website. <laughs> it's Good to Be a Man dot com website. I really like that one. For sermons, I generally listen to John MacArthur and Jeff Jordan. Okay, so I'm listening to them on my own. Yeah. All right. So uh, it's funny. Like I know Mike Foster. I used to live in. Uh, South Carolina, the area that he's in, we've really? we've done lunch, and that's my guy, man. Uh, he he don't mind. He don't mind standing where he stand. He don't mind. He don't care <laughs> if you got a rock or a gun. He don't mind, and I I, I respect that about him. Um, Mike really? is a is a really nice guy. Um, it, it, did you know he was in um what is that Holy Rollers documentary? I did not know that. No, yes. I didn't know that. He is uh, in I, Holy Rollers documentary where the Christian people were going to the casino and counting cards. Well, now I'm going to have to watch it for sure now. Yeah, yeah. He's a, he I told me about it. I'm going to have to. Yeah, he told me about it. Yeah, I think it. he did mention something. He mentioned uh, about counting, but he didn't mention Holy Rollers on one of his podcasts. So that, yeah. that sounds really familiar now that you mentioned it. Yeah, that's, he was in that documentary. We did a, we, like I said, we did lunch and he told me about it and I had to watch it. I was like, man, you ain't in. He was in there, man. He he he, he was part of the gang, man, running around counting cards and collecting money. But uh, that's that's too well, funny, that's, man. I mean, that's awesome. I mean, I guess you know that just demonstrates how small the reform community is in in uh, mm-hmm. the United States. I mean, you actually you know him personally, so that, that's so cool. <laughs> it is, man. It is, you know. But you, that's my friends. They claim I know everybody. So you, I don't know if you can you can use me as an <laughs> example. <a> <laughs> 
Uh, but 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 it's all good, man. But listen, Alan, look, I really appreciate you coming on the show, brother. This has been fun. Well, I appreciate um, you having me. Yeah, man, and uh, definitely want to stay connected to you, maybe, man. Maybe one of these days you can return the favor and come on one of my podcasts. Hey, That's brother, you, I'm just an invitation away. I don't turn down nothing but my okay. collar. <laughs> <laughs> so, awesome. uh, hey, before we get out of here, man, I'm gonna give you the floor to uh, just make any uh, words of encouragement or anything you want to say to the listeners before we get out. Here. yeah i mean just trust in jesus and jesus alone as for your salvation and uh, you will find him to be a perfect savior if you're out there and you're stuck in one the word of faith movement or the new apostolic reformation uh, change doesn't happen overnight carefully read the scriptures examine them listen to all viewpoints don't just listen to one viewpoint that can end up becoming really really problematic and uh the truth will, will come to you the spirit works in your heart nice good deal well listen bar listeners hey this is the end of this show but if you want extra content make sure you go to the link in the uh description and subscribe to the bar extra content i don't i don't know what i'm gonna call it just yet uh i already have a podcast called the sidebar this might be inside the bar i don't know what we're gonna call it but make sure you go subscribe uh go to the bargear.com pick up some bar gear and until next time you guys god bless and we are out